The Dahan understand that if they tend to the river during the dry months, the river will share its bounty. The water will be full of fish, harvests will be good, and families will grow. Disrespect the river's power, though, and a different side of the spirit will be seen. Calm banks will turn treacherous, the water will turn rough, and the flood will rise. When you play as the river, you have a lot to work with. Your, your starting cards give you a good mix of offense, control, and support, so you can jump into any of those roles as needed. If you need to wipe out an early explorer fast, you can do that. If a land's going to be built into or ravaged, you can shove the invaders out. You can wash away explorers, displace towns, and even give the Dahan a place to flourish. You can hand out energy to other spirits, which makes you a great ally to spirits that build up energy a bit more slowly. One of my favorite combinations when I'm playing river is to feed lightning energy, and then lightning will allow the river to move quickly. It's just a great symbiotic relationship. Now, you start with a single presence in the highest numbered wetlands, usually an inland land. None of your growth options have costs or downsides, so you can always pick the one that fits the situation. When you reclaim, you're going to be getting power cards and energy. When you place presents, you can place two of them. And if you choose the last growth option, you're going to be getting a power card and placing it farther range than you normally can. Getting more presents on the board is always nice, especially when you have two nearby wetlands you can expand into because of your special rule. Personally, I like using the third option turn after turn to get new cards, avoiding reclaiming as long as possible and just rolling with whatever I happen to get on my next turn. So I mentioned the special rule, and it's more about flexibility than glamour. Your presence in wetlands counts as sacred sites. You'll see its usefulness measured in how far river can spread across the board and how often river can reach a troublesome area that other spirits are having trouble targeting. If you make sacred sites whenever possible, you're going to have the presence to spare to take side trips to into trouble spots, as well as a few spare presence to sacrifice without losing effectiveness. I like Wash Away. It's one of River's unique cards. It's a slow card with a cost of one, a range of one, and it pushes explorers or towns. I tend to keep it the entire game just because it can be so effective as a preventative measure. After exploration, you can move the new explorers to a land where they won't build, and stopping a build from happening is even better than stopping the Ravage later. Not everybody agrees with this. If you got a problem spot where you don't have quite enough defense, the ability to move a few invaders out of the area could help someone else set up a counterattack or just prevent a blight. When you use it in concert with your innate, you can solve multiple areas at once. I also really, really like pushing invaders from the interior to the coast when the ocean is playing. It's just a good time for all involved. Well, except the invaders. It's a fairly common sight towards the end of the game to see the meandering path of River's presence stretching in a mostly unbroken line from one side of the board to the other. You're going to be getting a lot of cards as the game goes on, so you don't really need to focus on any one strategy. Despite not having any elements on your tracks, the top tier of your innate's pretty easy to hit if you focus on sun and water cards. You can also afford to take something that offers an immediate benefit with the idea of sacrificing it later for a major power. River is by far the most flexible of the starting spirits, so just tailor what you get to the situation. A new aspect that comes for River and Jagged Earth is Sunshine. It's a strange one because it removes one of your unique power cards entirely, uh, specifically Boon of Vigor, which gives another spirit energy based on how many power cards they played that turn. Now, losing a unique power is pretty substantial, but it gives you a lot in return. Not only do you start with an extra energy, you get a new innate power. Unlike the other aspect cards which replace the innate power, this one just gives you a second innate. Specifically, it gives you Boon of Sunshine's Promise, which is a support power focused on giving other spirits energy and later on allowing them to remove blight. It's a bit more complex than Boon of Vigor, with the first tier being that target spirit gains energy equal to one less than the highest uncovered number on your energy track. It takes a while to ramp up, but it uses the same elements as your other innate power, though the ratios of sun and water are different with sunshine, as you might expect, requiring more sun. Still, you're often going to be able to use them both, and you can prioritize which one to focus on, depending on if you want to shade more towards control or support. Like everything about River, you can adapt as needed to the situation. If you want to do a bit of everything, then River is your friend. Look. Let the specialists worry about how to deal with things outside of their expertise. You can just fill in the gaps, controlling the battlefield, dealing damage, aiding the Dahan, and supporting everyone else. Everyone loves having the river on their side. <laughs>